The Annandale Whiskey Distillery is situated in the southwest of Scotland, close to the village of Annan. The region carries the name Dumfries and Galloway and belongs to the lowland. The frontier to England, with the famous Gretna Green, is not far away. You need 15 minutes by car to reach the distillery from the A74, which passes Gretna Green. The distillery was already founded in 1830. It produced whiskey for nearly a hundred years. Johnny Walker bought the distillery in 1893. It worked until 1924. In the early 20s, a lot of heavy strikes paralyzed the British economy and Annandale had to close like a lot of other distilleries. It never opened again in the 20th century. The distillery buildings were used as a farm in the following decades. The world famous whiskey traveler Alfred Barnard visited the distillery around 1890. His report is still enjoyable in the facsimile issues of his book. Back then, the distillery produced 28,000 imperial gallons per year, which equals 130,000 liters. There's not much left of the old distillery equipment. The old chimney shows where the stills had been in former times. The new boiler for the process heat is located inside the half-circle-shaped new building where the waiter vapor rises. The distillery was bought in 2007 by David Thompson and Teresa Church. The renovation started from 2011. But the first cask was not filled before November 15, 2014 because of the findings of the foundation walls of the former stillhouse with its two pot stills. Today, this is an official historic site. The site is secured today by a rough iron fence. The visitor can see that a still house was placed at the lowest location in the facility. All liquids weren't pumped in former times. They flowed according to gravity from one production step to the next. Today, the inside of the kiln serves as an entry hall and a meeting point for the tour through the distillery. The grid of the drying kiln was placed at the height of the darker stones in the wall. A modern distillery has a lot of installations. Black power lines and colored data cables can be easily distinguished. The malt conditioning and storage is achieved in a very small room. The sieving machine for the barley corn and malt mill are placed upon each other in the classic way. The malt is transported by the beige elevators. The temperatures in the process are checked by simple control elements. The six wash bags and the typical three stills for a lowland distillery are placed in the present day main building. The modern mesh tun is covered with a copper lid and is placed in front of the wash bags. The distances between the equipment are held short. Inside the mesh tun you see the steerer and the sieves. The sieves are there to hold back the peel of the barley corn. The outlet to the underback is located at the bottom. The wash still with a little observation window in the neck is placed in the back of the still room. The intermediate and spirit stills have hollow bowls 
between pot and neck. They are called reflux bowls and lead to a better distillation. The spirit and sample safe is located between the intermediate and spirit still. The condensers were erected outside for a better cooling. The stills were produced, as so many others, by Richard Forthys from Rothes. They are heated indirectly by hot steam. You can easily see the spindles and thermometers for the measurement of the ABV of the hot raw whiskey. Both the wash still and the intermediate still run full throttle. The spirit still got its own locked little spirit safe. Isn't it wonderful to see the full production? One level below the stills are the spirit and intermediate receivers. A visitor center with a small cafe is placed in the old maltings. You may have small meals and some souvenirs. The first whiskey still takes some time to mature. It will take until Christmas 2017 until the first whiskey will be bottled. Up to then we have to be satisfied with raw spirit and liqueurs. There are peated and unpeated bottles available. The whiskey matures in casks which rest in warehouses just adjacent to the distillery. The ornaments of the forged iron gates are made with passion and look wonderful. The spider in the net is based on the legend about Robert the Bruce. He was defeated in his early days of his fighting against the English several times. It is said that he saw a spider rebuilding its nest and he said, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. When the buildings were used for farming, the gates for the warehouses were a lot bigger than today. You can see it here on the pictures by the patterns in the walls. The new make whiskey rests here until we will hopefully see the new bottles early in 2018.